Hi, this is Sri Devi Jasti from Vibrant Living Kitchen. Here we show easy to make plant-based recipes that are absolutely delicious and nutritious. We use wholesome plant-based ingredients that are grown locally and naturally. Being in the kitchen is the best thing one can do to help, um, help have good health for themselves and family. And um, I encourage people to get in the kitchen and make some good food that, uh, that keeps you healthy and happy. It helps in weight management, hormonal balancing, to keep your sugar levels under control, heart healthy and all of that. Have uh, enough protein and uh, nutrients in your diet while detoxifying at the same time. The kind of ingredients that we use, the spices and the herbs and all of that, they help in detoxification as well as nourishing you at the same time. So today I want to show you how to make a very chunky, hearty uh, soup that's made with scarlet beans. Yes, they're called scarlet beans. They're grown here in Kashmir. I am so, so proud of our land, what it can give us, and thankful and grateful for the farmers who grow these for us and everyone involved to make it happen for us to make this kind of food happen in our kitchens and eventually into our bellies. Um, so without any delay, let's see uh, the ingredients that we're gonna be using today and see how to make um, a chunky scarlet bean soup with lots of vegetables. <laughs> already in the kitchen okay um, so pumpkin potatoes carrot chow 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 it's called all are grown here locally uh, spinach and even rosemary grows up on our terrace garden and some bird chilies that's all and scarlet beans okay so scarlet beans all beans and legumes have to be soaked overnight and there is a video to show you how to cook legumes so that they don't bloat your stomach and actually give you the nutrition that you need okay so it is a great thing to do if you're trying to be a vegetarian so eat a lot of legumes with but with care cook them carefully look at the recipe that we have uh, look at the procedure that we have um, in youtube how to cook your legumes so that you don't have gas okay so uh, uh, let's start i've already soaked uh, legumes uh, these scarlet beans last night and this is how they are when they're cooked so we're going to use about half a kilo of this yummy pumpkin, yummy looking pumpkin for now. Oh. It takes some skill to cut. Yay, this is a perfect pumpkin, wow. Oh, it's delicious. And these pumpkin seeds do not waste. Nicely wash them and dry them and peel and eat. It's got a ton of zinc and selenium. It's good for your immunity and brain health and skin and everything. Um, so we cut these. We need about 500 grams of uh, pumpkin, 150 grams of carrots, and another 150 grams of chow chow. It's also called coyote squash. Uh, and in India, we also call it Bangalore brinjal, Bangalore vankai, okay? So two carrots, about 150 grams. Uh, about less than this of that of uh, chow chow and about 150 grams of potatoes and um, a bunch of spinach and one onion well two onions and a little bit of garlic okay and a rosemary and some chilies So include all kinds of vegetables. If you don't find exactly this combination of vegetables, don't sweat it. Okay, this is a nice combination, but there are many other nice combinations. Don't, don't be um, you know, looking for ingredients that are not in season. Substitute with the ingredients that are indeed in season. For example, you can use uh, birakai, you can use sorakai, bottle gourd, 
or rich gourd or zucchini in place of chow chow. You can use, you can uh, skip carrots if you wish and, and do more of pumpkin. And uh, if you don't have spinach, uh, maybe use, um, if you're in other countries, uh, kale, collars, uh, Swiss chard, all of those are fantastic. And uh, what else? Um, if you don't want to use potatoes, you can use sweet potatoes. It'll taste delicious still. And um, if you don't have rosemary, you can use thyme. And if you don't have thyme, you can use parsley. If you don't have parsley, you can use coriander. It's not such a big deal. They're all wonderful. It tastes a little different, but delicious. The taste of the soup really depends on the quality of the ingredients that you're going to be using. So focus on the quality of the ingredients. Uh, quality meaning fresh and grown naturally. And, uh, and you'll be fine. If you're not using spinach, you could use also tomato in here. I would have liked to use tomato, but since I'm using spinach, I'm not using tomatoes because together they may call, uh, they may, um, they may uh, produce oxalic acid. So, you know, generally we don't mix those two, spinach and tomatoes. So carrots, chow chow. I'm getting a little help here. Thank you and the potatoes. So grow some herbs in your kitchen garden, in your windowsill, uh, in little pots in your balcony. They are so worth it. A, link, a little twig like this can change the taste of your soup. So do grow them. My grandma used to very lovingly, you know, save the seeds and dry them and peel them for us and give it, oh, I still remember the taste of those pumpkin seeds. It's so hard to get that kind of taste in the market, but your pumpkin that is grown naturally will have similar taste even today. So do try, don't, don't, um, don't throw them. You know, time spent in the kitchen, I think is uh, so rewarding. Um, it not only gives you delicious food for your family. It is also uh, very therapeutic. It gives, it makes you calm. It helps you connect with nature better. It's, um, it's, it's, you know, it's cooking is art, a form of art. You know, it helps to grow love towards cooking. And that is what I hope to do, to inspire you to get in the kitchen more often and make food for you yourself and family. Eating plant-based foods is proven to help you health-wise, weight, weight management, all of that. And it's easy to make and it's so environmentally friendly. It takes so much less resources than meat. Get good knives. You want to use um, sharp knives, but be careful. I think cutting a pumpkin nicely is a kind of a heroic act. <laughs> so crushing garlic like this gives more aroma than chopping it up directly. So you want to crush it first and then chop. And never burn, burn garlic. It's just, it's not, it doesn't digest easily. It's, uh, it may cause heart burn. If you notice, a lot of people can't handle those recipes that have burnt garlic. I don't know why they have such burnt garlic recipes. Um, they're not good for you. Actually, Italians, um, they throw, uh, if, if by accident, they make the garlic not even burnt, little overcooked, they just take out that, I mean, they just start all over again because that determines the taste of the sauce or soup or whatever they're making. So I understand why they do that. Okay, I think I can start making the soup now. And while I am, um, you know, frying the onions, sauteing the onions, I shouldn't say fry, sauteing the onions, I can cut the rest of the vegetables. 
So I'm gonna use um, like a tablespoon of coconut oil. And before the oil gets really hot, so not to burn the garlic, I'm gonna add garlic and get it over. And I'm gonna add rosemary. Just peel off like this, or you can just leave it like this, it'll just comes apart as the soup is getting cooked. And onions. I always say you don't have to add um, oil and do all of this. You can just add all the ingredients together, add some water and let cook it away and it'll be just fine. And at the end, when you're serving, you can put nice amount of cold pressed virgin olive oil and it'll be delicious. I'm gonna add two little chilies. You could uh, add parsley too to this soup if you have. Celery also is a great addition. Okay, so you have a ton of vegetables and they're gonna get a little roasted. And then I'm gonna add water and cook beans and cook together. And let's see how it transforms. Mm going to put a little, a little bit and wait patiently and enjoy the smells. So this is this is an entire meal if you were to eat like a half a kg, 500 grams of this soup with um, again one slice of whole wholesome bread, um, a millet roti or even quinoa or brown rice you know on the side is also it can be it can make a meal or on its own just this on its own just substitute one meal like this per day and see how what kind of results you'll be experiencing and leave that in the comment section and i would love to hear from you about how these recipes turn out for you and um, you know what kind of uh, versions that you have made on your own and uh, if you have any other questions also please do comment and i will respond to you all right so ooh, i just got a facial okay it's nicely nicely cooked i think the ones that we need to check is this chow chow and it's fantastically cooked it cooked about like uh, 20 minutes it takes a little time now it's time to add cooked uh, scarlet beans your protein part and the yummy richness and adjust salt we only added salt once okay a little pepper and last we'll be adding spinach or whatever greens you want you don't want them to overcook and get gray you know gray means that you kill the nutrients already and the taste isn't good either so just wash and chop it away did you know greens have so much protein eat enough greens they are excellent for you not only they have uh, protein lots of minerals antioxidants fiber and this part you can save it for your juices or you can just add them here also but it's not going to be as luxurious as it would if you didn't add all of that so i so making vegetable juices a daily habit is another healthy one so do try that okay. kale works fantastic for this soup mm. all it needs is 
some good dose of extra virgin olive oil. I know extra virgin olive oil, olive oil is not really local for us, but that's an exception because it's just so, so, so yummy and so healthy too. But listen, you're most welcome not to add. You can add some powdered sesame to this or you can add almond butter again if you want it. All I'm looking for is some richness from some seeds or oil, nuts. Uh, I always say this, it takes a lot of seeds to get one spoon of oil, so it's always better to eat nuts and seeds in, in its whole form. Um, because you get the fiber, you get the protein, you get the calcium, you get all these nutrients and not just the fat from it if you are going to have. That's why almond butter is a fantastic addition because for us here we make uh, we make fresh at Vibrant Living. Um, so almond butter is um, just buttered up almonds, whole, nothing else is added. So you can, you can access those also on our online shop. Okay, so you cook like this for a few more minutes and like uh, five more minutes and check for your condiments, spices and uh, adjust and you'll be done. And serve it with a good, um, good quality bread, I mean good wholesome bread or your millet rotis and or on its own you can have with a little bit of olive oil on it. Okay, so back to soup. You can also do a crock pot cooking you know, slow cooking, you can just leave it in low and just be doing your other things and come back and only add your greens at the end. That also works. So done, I tested for taste and it is tasting good. And let me plate it up. One of the yummiest things. Mm. Here is your soup. A lot of you have asked me to give you the soups that we serve here for dinners at Vibrant Living for our subscription meals. This is one of them, and one of our um, one of our clients' favorite soups. Actually, I hope you enjoy it. You make it for yourself and your family, and make variations of it and enjoy it. Hit the button like if you like it, share and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be updating these uh, easy to make plant-based dishes on a weekly basis, and um, I hope you enjoy this. Namaste.